years. Also happy to report that the Dr. Lorna Breen Act was passed recently, which yes. is really yes. help us. So can, um, you tell, so can you tell our audience a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, if, if you haven't heard of Dr. Lorna Breen, she was a phenomenal emergency medicine physician in New York who was on the front lines of COVID and unfortunately ended up dying by suicide. And her family really moved by um, this tireless, fearless woman who then succumbed to suicide. They, they wanted to make sure this was a never event. Right. Um, so the Feists actually, her family, the Feists, they actually worked with Congress and eventually passed the Dr. Lorna Breen Act, which gives around $140 million in funding for the things that we need to create system, systemic change. On one end is ensuring that when, when we do need mental health access, and that's a piece, it's, it's not, burnout isn't treated by going to see a psychologist or psychiatrist, but many of us have anxiety and depression because of the work that we're doing, especially mm -hmm. now. So some of it is trying to help ease those barriers. Um, I know I've, I'm licensed in several states, I don't know how you feel, but every time I do one of those licensure applications, there are it's, these inappropriate questions, right? Absolutely. Yep. I just applied for my medical license in Florida and it was the same thing. It was, and it, it really does make you think, you know, about, well, even if you have coaching or you have to, you know, record that as counseling and mental health treatment and, right. it's, and, it, and it, it's a barrier to get right. into help. And as a psychiatrist, I see that all the time. So Right. And it's, um, it's just not relevant to whether we're fit or not to provide the best possible clinical care. In fact, it's a sign of strength if you seek mental health, mental health care, because you need it. 